What's up, everybody? It's Melvi Bernard Classic for you, and today we talk about thoughts on the second Walter Gromit short film, The Wrong Trousers. First released back in 1993, and this was, I say, four years after their very first one, The Grand Day Out, came out in 1989, and also a little bit of upgrades. Before we begin, did you subscribe? Did you hit the bell? If so, are you being hijacked by a super villain who is a penguin disguised as a chicken? If so, you're on your own, Chuck. But first, boom. Dive! Ooh, nice. So, yeah. <clears throat> the wrong trousers, which I think has become an icon as well. Including his first villain, of course. Well, technically, his second villain, you count the robot from the from the Grand Day Out. And also, because I have no power here, but I managed to save my reviews <laughs> before the power went out, so... I'm doing fine. So, yeah. Grand Day Out first came out back in... December 17th of 1993, well, that's for the U.S., but in the U.K., it came out the 26th of December that same year. With a running time of 29 minutes and a budget of 650 pounds. Damn. Well, the others has like, what, a million? Damn. That has to be different than those days, huh? So yeah, it was produced by Ardman Animation. It was directed and co-written by Nick Park, which featured his character Walter Grummet, and in association with the Walter Grummet Limited. Eh, I didn't know about that. We have BBC Bristol as well, and it was Lionheart Television and BBC Children's International. It is the second fe film featuring the eccentric Venter Wallace, voiced by Peter Salas, and his friend Grummet, following a grand day out back in back four years prior in 1989. In the film, a villainous penguin named... I never knew this penguin had a name. I thought it was just say the penguin. That's it. They never mentioned his name. His name is actually Feathers McGraw. Uses Wallace and Grove's robotic techno trousers to steal a diamond from the same museum. This was the last Walter Grove film to have Wallace as the only spoken character. Meaning? Let's see, because the only feature, because the Penguin doesn't talk, Grove doesn't talk, so Wallace is the only one who's talking here. And this is the last time, because after that, a cliche, we have two talking characters. Wallace and Wendelin. And then after that, the famed movie, of course, we have many, many characters to talk. So yeah, this is quite a rare to know this. And also, it was premiered in the U.S., back in the like I said. And actually, it's co commercially successful. It won an Academy Award for Best Animated Short Film in 1994. and also inspired a charity fundraising day known as Wrong Trousers Day. On several events. The short was a fall to by the two sequels, A Close Shave, released back in 95, and A Matter of Loaf and Death, released in 2008. Ferris McDraw will return in 2003 video game Walter Grummet in Project Zoo. And this is the one I kind of like because this is the first one I saw. <laughs> because I seen this before, I think it was on Cartoon Network back in the 2000s era, and I do remember this. I watched the wrong trousers. <laughs> I'm mistaken Wallace for being Mr. Tweety because he looks so similar except Wallace doesn't have bushy eyebrows, and he ain't that fat. <laughs> but yeah, it's actually because this is a good series because remember. And, <clears throat> let me explain this. This is like four years after Grand Day Out, and remember, it's the anime, it's the, they changed a lot. 
if you see the Grand Day out, then you go to Wrong Trousers. You see the claymation stop motion has changed a lot. Cooling hat walls is now more sleeker, more smoother. While you see his first appearance, he's a bit right rough. Whatever the one that he first appeared as a Grand Day was a a project by Nick Park back when he was in in film school, and this became an instant hit. But lost to another Ironman project, Creature Comfort. And compare looking now. About well the budget is like six hundred and fifty pounds. That's like eight hundred now or a million pounds now. <laughs> and still, this is the trademark style that they use now of Walt and Grummet. From the wrong trousers to close shave, the movie and a matter of love and death. And their upcoming one coming next year for Netflix. And it's quite be interesting to me. And also their first villain. Well, super villain. If you can't, I don't know why I count the robot that Walls made when he visited the moon. Maybe because Walls was eating cheese and he thought, what the fuck is this bastard doing rowing the moon? I'm going to cut him up. Maybe because he programmed like that? Maybe no. But yeah, I think this is actually a funny gag Say, Go oh, grief, it's you! Really? You follow the chicken? <laughs> I don't see no tail feathers on that chicken. <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. And the funny part is, I never knew this vil this penguin had a name. I thought it was just like, the penguin. That's it. It was actually Feathers McGraw. Is that a cowboy name or something? I don't know. <laughs> and remember, it's, because the only one who's talking here is Wallace, because Grumman's in the dark, and the penguin doesn't talk, but I think he does? He just makes some sounds, like grunts, when he gets pissed off. I do recall that. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe deja vu. Besides, wait. Uh, sorry, it's about to sneeze. Whew. No way. Uh, I hate allergies. Do you? <laughs> but yeah. Kind of like it. As for the soundtrack, because... It, hold it. As I was saying, the original airing, the first VHS release of the film... And the 1999 DVD release, Grumman's birthday card plays Happy Birthday to You. Remember, the copyright from Happy Birthday as owned by Warner Brothers? <laughs> Boy, doesn't matter if you're in the brand or that. If you get screwed with Warner Brothers, you're fucked. <laughs> so, yeah. I think the Happy Birthday song is now public domain now? I do not know. I gotta check. In subsequent home video release and airings, this was replaced with For Here's a God, Jolly Good Fellow for, to avoid copyright infringement, likely due to, to the version of the birthday, happy birthday song being copyrighted. <laughs> if you remember, this wasn't the only time because I remember I was watching a Popeye cartoon called Happy Birthday. That is the same thing as if Happy Birthday to my pal, to my pal, to my pal, as. The rhythm of F London bridges falling down. See that? Like example, for for he's a jungle fellow, which replaces that because we're not the copyright. It's a uh, no. It's a he's a, he's a jolly good fellow. That's it. Well, the other one used to probably is a different one, and that's in the forties. Oh yeah, <laughs> boy. <laughs> but back then. Are two Pacific songs from the Penguins Radio, where were replaced at with unidentified piece of music played through a Hammond organ, tie a yellow ribbon round the old oak tree, also played through the same instrument, was left intact due to being in public domain. The piece that were removed are Happy Talk from the musical South Pacific. And and how much is that doggy in the window? Along with Wallace's singing of the latter during the subsequent morning. In addition, Grummet's television during breakfast no longer plays the opening university theme. Although 
and announcer can be still be heard say, Welcome to Open University. However, the original soundtrack can be still be heard in the background of the commentary track of the DVD release, although the Blu-ray release features the commentary track with the alter soundtrack. The original soundtrack can be also be heard in non-English version of the film. Jesus Christ! From copyright to altercation, damn. Nothing can be intact. <laughs> and let's talk about the music, because the one song I like is the suspense where the penguin is about to rob use the diamond using Wallace's trousers to conduct his bank infamous diamond heist, which of course the music, the piano music of the suspense. You're trying to not screw this up. And of course the famous one the little train set chase, which dun 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 Yeah, that piano chase, which is actually pretty funny. I kind of like it. Like that action music, piano music piece, which we all remember. And how long it took to do that scene? Like, remember. This is stop motion. They have to be piece by piece, making like the train is going faster and faster on both sides, which is actually pretty funny. <laughs> and the question is, how the fuck that penguin can shoot a gun? He has no fingers. What kind of gun is that? Is that only designed for him? He can just have massive trigger for his flipper. He just ding, boom, you're fired. <laughs> but yeah, as for the plot. For those who don't rem don't know about this, those are the Gen Zs. It's Grumman's birthday, and Grum and Walt gives him two presents: a collar and a lit a lead set. Please tell me it's not a lead. And some robotic. Here it is out: X NASA Techno trousers. Which. Where did Gr where did Wallace get his hands on an ex robotic NASA techno trousers? That has to be a catch here, which can take Grom for walks. Which, mm hmm, Grom can cook. He can do anything, but he needs walks. While Grom is out on a forced test run, which he won't be enjoying, Wallace realizes that he does not have enough money to pay the bills. Decides to put an empty room in his house up for rent. A penguin arrives to rent the room, but decides he likes Grummet's red room better. Unable to say no to a pen guest, Walls moves Grummet into an empty room. The penguin takes in an interest in the techno trousers after watching Grummet use them for a walk on walls and ceilings by playing loud music all night and taking up all Walls' time and affection. The penguin deliberately drives Grummet to run away from home. Once Grumman has gone, the Penguin removes the controls from the technical trousers and converts them into a portable remote. He then replaces Waltz's normal trousers with the techno trousers, which, how the fuck he didn't know that? So that Wallace will accidentally put them on. Once Wallace is stuck in the wrong trousers, the Penguin uses the remote to send Wallace running and jumping all over town, eventually exhausting him into a deep sleep. Meanwhile, Grumman knows a wanted poster for a criminal Phyllis McDraw, which I forgot. Supposedly a chicken, but really the penguin in disguise, which really nothing noticing McGraw has been controlling the techno trousers. Grumman begins to follow and spy on him, eventually returning to ha the house. He his research confirms McDraw's identity and curves a plot to steal a huge diamond from the local Natural History Museum. By the part, he just puts a glove on his head and just, you know, when he starts to go, he just, he just comes it back like it was his hair. And it's just boing. <laughs> That's actually a funny touch right there. Grum is detained when one of Wall's inventions accidentally triggers. McDraw puts a special... Helmet on the sleeping Wallace's head and uses the remote to march the techno trousers while Wallace is inside the museum, directing the techno trousers into the museum through the air vent. McDraw secures the diamond with a via toy crane claw 
built into the helmet. However, Wallace awakens when a burglar alarm trips, returning to the house with Wallace. McGraw holds him and Grumman at gunpoint and attempts to flee with the diamond. An extended chase follows. Drove the house atop Wallace's sprawling model train set ledge. Remember, this has to be the funniest train chase scene ever because, first of all, this is the scene where everybody's in the train train. And the penguin is, is shooting at Grumman, who's hanging on the chandelier. He shoots him, hits the chandelier, he falls on the train. Uncouples the cars, and they split. <laughs> Which is actually pretty funny. Soon after, Wallace eventually freed himself from the techno trousers, and Grumman managed to capture McGraw. Actually, let's just say the techno managed to block the train. He fly, he sent to the air. Grandma hits the cabinet, grabs the bottle, and gets and McGraw lands into the milk bottle, capturing him and saving the diamond. They return him to his pri they return send him to, to Scotland Yard where he's in the prison cell, pissed off. In the wall of the city zoo. Wall pays off his debt with the war money from the Techno Tribes into the rubbish. However, they walk off into a sunset on their own. Wallace? You just throw an ex NASA techno trailer that could worth billions of dollars into the trash? My man, you can just reverse engineer and you can just fix up the damn goof. You can tell NASA, hey, I had to fix your stupid trousers. <laughs> but yeah, as for the reception, fun fact Close Show was not the only one that had 100% Rotten Tomatoes because Rotten Trousers also have 100% Rotten Tomatoes as well. <laughs> Sorry, Wrong Trousers was voted as the 18th best British television show by the British Film Institute and was a approval rating of 100% on Rotten Tomatoes based on 26 reviews and an average score of 9.10 out of 10. The critical consensus were an endearing and meticulous sharp case of stop motion animation. Which, of course, the Wrong Trousers won the Academy Award for Best Anime Short in 1994. And also, the film was awarded the Grand Prix at the Tampere Film Festival and the Grand Prix of the World's Festival of Anime Film, Anim Anima Fest Zagreb of 1994. <laughs> uh, excuse me. But yeah, those are my thoughts on Walter Gromit in The Wrong Trousers. But tell me, what was your thoughts on The Wrong Trousers? Did you like it? Did you enjoy it? And this ain't the first time or the second time because if I recall, but yeah, a show of Walter Grunt featuring, hey, the, the Penguin here again, which is considered lost media. Because no one ever recorded the show, just photos of the production. But yeah, what are your thoughts on The Wrong Trousers? Did you enjoy it? Did you like it? That it made you laugh, comment down below. But yeah, if you're new to the channel, remember to remember to subscribe, hit the bell, like this video, and remember we're aiming at our goal at 100. No, sorry, 1 million subscribers or at least 500k, because by May of this year will be our 11th anniversary of the channel, from 2013 to 2023. So it's a big moment for us. So let's do this. But until then. Have a great day, everybody. Peace out.